We're continuing our coverage of the Houston City elections today with City Council candidate Michael Kubosh running for at-large position number three. Michael, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Thank you. It's good to be here to, with you today. You know, I've gotten to know you quite a bit over the past uh, about four years now and, and working with you on a lot of different things, but I think a lot of the readers out there in Texas GOP Vote don't know who Michael Kubosh is. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father of five children, I'm a grandfather of, of 16 grandchildren, I'm even a great-grandfather, <laughs> and I tell people I'm way too young to be a great-grandpa. I would agree with you on that. <laughs> and uh, I'm a businessman here in Houston for the last 20 years. I've been very successful in our business, and um, I'm a supporter of, the, uh, of many candidates who are on the GOP ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also uh, taken on the, the city with issues like the red light cameras, uh, and we won that election with 186,000 voters uh, voting to, to get rid of those cameras. We also, uh, Bob, uh, when, the, when this administration wanted to criminalize the, the giving of people to the needy and to the hungry, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it, she wanted to criminalize the feeding of the poor. Uh, we stood up and we got 34,000 petitions signed. Uh, a lot of our efforts changed a lot of the ordinance to where that they didn't require uh, the churches to have approved kitchens anymore. They, they changed a lot of it. But still we believe that, that something needs to be done. That should have never happened. You know, Michael, one of the things that has impressed me about your political background is the wide range of support that you have. Uh, from one of the most conservative members of the Texas legislature, Alan Fletcher, who's endorsed your campaign and probably wouldn't be in office without the support that you helped give him to, to get him there, to the, uh, the minority pastors who some might perceive as on the other end of the political spectrum, typically voting on the Democrat side of the aisle. How is it that you can appeal to such a broad cross-section of, of the political world? Well, Bob, I, I really care for people. And, and when you really think about it, uh, that the the needs of people are the same no matter what party you're in, and the the idea of being conservative and and being pro-family and pro-life, it appeals to the ministers and it appeals to the people in the minority communities. Uh, we have to establish a relationship with people throughout the city. I'm running for a nonpartisan race. This is not a a D race or an R race. This is a nonpartisan race. Uh, people are trying to say, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Republican, others saying I'm a Democrat, some think that I'm tied to one uh, crazy group or another, but the truth of the matter is I'm a, I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. so, so tag me a, an FP for a fighter for the people. I stand up and fight for what's right, and I put my own money into it. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's what shocks a lot of folks, is that we have stood up, my brothers mm -hmm. and I, and have taken on issues, and we have funded it ourselves because we believe in what we're doing. The red light camera is a clear example of that, where, where you uh, not only put your own money into this, but built a, a very broad cross-section of, of people in the community to, to stop this money grab that was going on by the city of Houston. How, how did that campaign come about? And well, well, that's one of the ways that, that we built such a relationship in the minority community. Is that, uh, first of all, they could see that it was a money grab. And they saw that, that finally somebody was standing up to, to, to protect them and, and the citizens at large and that they were causing accidents. But then when we won the election and then they threw out the election, there's where the trick came in. Because I said, hey, I see trickery. And, and they threw out the election and then the minorities then really rallied around us because they saw that we had been victimized and they as well, mm -hmm. that we, our vote was, was jeopardized. And, and they're concerned about votes. And so they started having town hall meetings in a lot of the black churches and I would show up and I, and I became like a celebrity to them because I was the champion, the, you know, even though all my brothers were involved, I was the face uh, of, of, of the movement. And, mm -hmm. and we pushed this and eventually we not only got our, our, uh, our election reestablished uh, and reinstated, we also got the mayor and the city council to vote themselves to get rid of the red light cameras. Mm -hmm. So it was, and listen, when we would go to City Hall, Bob, the place was packed mm -hmm. with, with, with my supporters. And when one of us would speak, we'd stand and they would cheer and finally the mayor said, she's gonna throw us all out if we kept it up. <laughs> so we, she said, you can stand up in support of the people, of, of the person speaking, 
but we're not gonna let you have any outburst or clapping. So we would all stand up and raise our hands like this whenever the person was speaking, meaning we were for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of, of the mayor, um, she made a comment in the Houston Chronicle um, not too long after the San Antonio passed its, its ordinances that I think many people will find unconstitutional where ministers could actually be prosecuted for expressing the gospel against homosexuality. Um, she made some comments that very much resemble what President Obama said to the Russian president about just wait till next term and we can get some things done. I've met your mother and, and uh, you know you talk about a solid conservative lady. I don't think she'd let Michael Kubosh support Mayor Parker's <laughs> policies on that issue. I, and, and nor would any, any of us that I know of. I, I don't understand uh, the, the great drive to get something like that accomplished. I believe a minister has a right to, to marry or not to marry whoever he will. Many people may not know that I'm an ordained minister myself. I have been since I was uh, in my 20s. And I, I marry people from time to time in my office that come by and they want to be married. And I get a chance to talk to them about life and about their family and about the future. But, but to say that I would be prosecuted because I wouldn't perform a wedding for, for somebody, uh, regardless of why I didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of what the circumstance was. Mm -hmm. Now, I've refused to marry people before because I didn't believe, I didn't like the situation. You know, it wasn't necessarily that type of situation you're discussing, but it was a situation where I didn't feel comfortable, so I didn't mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. I think those strong values and strong morals are, are part of that compass that you have that will serve the people well on all sides of the political spectrum. I think you're, what you're saying is basically, Bob, is that you don't elect somebody and expect them to get the right values. Mm -hmm. By the time you're my age, 62, your values are very well set. My moral compass is set, my, my physical conservative compass is set, my, my desire to support family and, and, and to, to help our government is set. So nobody has to train me to figure out if I'm gonna do the right thing or not. When that vote comes up, I'm gonna make the right decision. I'm gonna stand up for the people of this city. And I want the people to come out and vote for me in November. I need your vote. I need your support. And if I get into a runoff, which I hope I don't, I'm gonna need your financial support. Because by the time this race is over in November for me, I'll have pretty much depleted everything I can put into it. Now let's talk about the election itself. That's coming up. Early voting starts uh here. October 21st. Okay. It's going to be uh, on Monday, October 21st. It runs through uh, the end of the month, uh, mm -hmm. I think the 29th, and then uh, we have um, then we have the uh, uh, well, actually it runs through the third, third. Well, I think it runs through November the first. Then after that, we have the election on November the fifth. But there's already voting taking place, Bob, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, early voting ballots already out there that that you you can vote by. Um, by mail because if, if you're if you're over 65 or you have a reason to believe you're not going to be here you can request a ballot by mail and you can vote that way our military people are voting that way as well that yes. are serving overseas so uh, we definitely want to ask all conservatives to come out also at the same time on the city elections is going on we have the the constitutional amendments on the ballot for people to be involved in the city election typically has such a low voter turnout, it really gives a great opportunity for a group of conservatives to come out and make a huge difference. And that's what I'd like to ask our readers to come out and, and do in this election. Michael, I hope you'll come back to Texas GOP vote and let's drill down into some more specific issues about the city council and, and the work that you would be doing there. I look forward to it. Thank All you, right. Bob. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.